November 9th. Uh, it's about 70 degrees, so uh, we took the day off from hunting. Came out here, decided we're gonna film uh, my technique of euro nipping. Uh, I use the OPST laser line to uh, cider, and I'm running two tungsten nymphs. One is a Frenchie, and the other is a uh, sulfur imitation. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you my technique of how to nymph. It's one of the easiest and most effective ways on how to nymph. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get down here and try to catch some of these fall browns that are in this stream. And uh, should be a lot of them in here, so we'll get on some action. I'll show you my techniques, give you some tips and everything. And uh, uh, yeah. All right, I wanna really quickly show you how I cast in my basic drift. I do a tuck cast, which is Joe Humphrey's made it famous. It's more of a wrist snap, launch the flies in, get them down quicker, because these are tungsten. But uh, yeah, if you're nipping, you have your slider line there. You're just gonna snap. Arm up pod, right line. Don't drag, just leave. Current bring them, leave. Set the hook. That was really hard, but the basic drip is leave. If any pause, set it. That's the snag. You get the idea, and that's my basic cast, my basic drill. Uh, we got some low clear water today. It's moving decent, but uh, uh, it's not great water. But uh, there's some browns in here, and uh, hopefully they're pretty aggressive. But yeah, you just. You want to lead the slider line, lead the flies. Don't drag them. If you see anything, you want to set it. Most of the time, it's probably a rock, but uh, you never know. These fish, they'll you'll be able to tell once you kind of figure out the tactic. You just want to keep it tight, keep that slider line just above the water, and if it pauses, you set the hook. Got bottom there, pulled a leaf. But yeah, that's how sensitive it is. It has a very effective technique. You wanna gauge like the depth of the water with your cider line. Because if you're getting snagged up enough, you want to keep that slider a little tighter and higher. But, uh, I keep getting snagged up, I need to tighten it up a little bit. Might be some over behind this rock. This hole's not very deep right now. None of this stream is very deep. It's not great nymphing water, but you can still be highly effective with this technique. Oh, that was a fish, and now I'm stuck in a rope swing. Awesome. Well, the camera was off, but because I got a tangle, then I cast it right back in there. I got a pretty little rainbow on. They're really collared up here in the fall. He either took a, a golden stone or he took a caddis imitation. Really, really pretty fish. I still can't tell what he took. I think it popped out. Oh, he took a caddis imitation. And it's out, so we're just gonna get him back real quick. Really pretty fish.
And now he's tangling in the line. And yeah. Really pretty rainbow. And he's back. Well, I wish they had the camera on, but that was cool. I got tangled in and uh, immediately cast it back out as soon as I got out. Wasn't thinking about it. I was about to move spots and uh, yeah, he crushed that uh, caddis imitation. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get back in the pocket. Hopefully have the camera on and catch more fish and give you some more tips on how I urine, how I nymph. There's two main forms I really do. I tight line euro nymph with tungsten and stuff like that where I all indicator nymph with like a New Zealand strike indicator or a, even like trout magnet floats are cheap at Walmart, use them. If it's a bigger water, I'll usually get the trout magnet ones because with this, I'll use a New Zealand because it's small and when it hits the water, it doesn't make that much of a noise or anything, a disturbance. So, but yeah, we're tight lining right now and we're gonna get back in the pocket and catch more trout. That last fish was just here pretty well in front of me, right off the ledge. So I pulled him out of there fast enough, so if there's any more in there, I don't think I would have spooked him. There's, oh, he just got off. There's another one in that pocket. He hammered that. I think that was bottom there, but yeah, I hadn't got any hits in this pocket. Then I moved down here to this tail end there, turned the camera off out on that tangle, and just caught that rainbow. Again, you're just looking for the pause. You want to keep that line tight, lead it, and it'll, oh, that was a fish. I wasn't paying attention. Just lead the line down through there, keep it tight. And there's fish in there. This is one of the more effective methods of fly fishing. Oh, dude, he's hit it like three times right there. The undercurrent of this pocket's weird too. It's kind of cocking them sideways. And that is a long rod for this stream, but just tight line, tight line, keep the line tight. Lead the line. Left too much leader out there. There was a pause, but that's shallow right there. If anything, they're pretty well about a couple feet up in front of me and like directly in front of me before that run shallows out. I'm thinking they're on the inside of this run because there's two runs where that rocks up there. One comes off the side and one comes this side and brings a current swell into the center. And I'm thinking they're stacked right here on the inside run. I'm setting the hook way too hard. There he is. Oh, that's a good rainbow. Came up and hit that hard. It's a really nice rainbow. This small stream. Oh, 
is he either took the caddis or a golden stone again. I'm gonna try to pull his pull the rod sideways, pull his head towards you and kind of get him down run out of the pocket so he can get back in there. But he, he's a bigger trout, so you don't want to put too much tension on him. I'm running 5X. Highly doubt he snaps it, but he could wrap it around the rock. Oh, this is a really pretty fish. He has pink fins and everything. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Fall colored up rainbow. And he's about to run down into a riffle. He's coming at us. Oh, that's a gorgeous fish. He's pulling drag too. I have my drag pretty high. And he's in the riffle crap. Don't like that. Don't like that at all. Okay. I think he's tired now. We're gonna bring him over. He's still running. Oh yeah, he's done now. Great fish. Took the caddis. Oh, saw me. Crap, don't go around the rock. This is a great fish. I'm being extremely cautious with him, but he's not making this easy at all. I'm not trying to bowl him in. Now I, now I might be, that's not a good spot for him. God. Look at that fish. That's a great fish. Great rainbow. Took a caddis imitation for the tungsten bead. That's a great fish. Small stream. Great rainbow. Got a slight hook jaw on him. I love these fall colored rainbows too. because They get that like brown tint to them. They get really pink. Oh, that's a great fish. Ooh, look at him. Pink fins, slight hook jaw. He's tired, but this water's cold, so we're gonna try to get him back pretty quick. Yeah, that's a great fish. Now the same pocket. Those two rainbows missed a, another one in there. I was expecting to catch a lot of browns because there is a lot of browns in this stream. But these fall rainbows are great too. That's a great fish. Awesome. Let's get back in the pocket there and uh, catch some more trout because apparently it's stacked now that I'm kind of getting back in the field. I haven't nymphed for a little while. Been busy with school and hunting season, obviously. But uh, yeah, starting to get it back and uh, we're catching fish now. Got a couple hours of daylight left. Gonna get back up here, move spots, try to catch some browns as well, some more rainbows. And I'll give you some more tips on how I nymph because my go-to is your own nymphing tight lining, but it depends on the situation. I will use indicators. Suspended nymphing is great, especially with the currents weird or if you don't have much current. You can just suspend them through, let it pull itself through, and uh, it's very effective if the trout are aggressive. Just wanted to show you the fly setup real quick. There's a betis nymph and a squirmy worm down to a bottom to a caddis. I call it a bullet caddis. It's a really heavy tungsten, it's thin body, thin streamline. A lot of people call them tungsten surveyors, stuff like that. There's fast sinking fly drifts through the hole really great but, uh, we're gonna fish this run right here real quick and uh, catch more fish so, yeah let's get after it here's a fish brownie I think This fight sucks. I broke the tip of my rod back there. I fell in the water. Snapped like the top five inches of my rod off. So, yeah, that's not something I felt like replacing right now. But really pretty brownie. 
Oh yeah, look at that brown. Fat little brown. Took the uh, took the caddis again. All the fish today have taken a caddis. Fat, fat brown. Really cool fish. Uh, yeah, let's get that brownie back. That's cool. I wanted to catch brown today. Caught two really pretty rainbows, lost another rainbow. But uh, that's my first brown of the day. I'm gonna try to catch one more real quick before I call it. We're losing camera light. Plus, I'm a little wet and uh, my rod's broken, so the nymphing doesn't feel that great right now because it's, my rod's stiff now. That, that tip was so nice, so flimsy, great fights. But uh, yeah, we just caught one with a broken rod, so I'm gonna get in there one more time and then head back to the car and uh, call it a day. All right, we're gonna wrap it up there getting dark we got a broken rod uh, broke about the top actually is about a foot off the top I fell in the water back there and it caught a limb the line did and snapped the top of it off so I'm gonna have to replace that but uh, this video is more educational than me fishing it was me teaching my the technique I use mostly and how like tips I do little tactics how I cast how I hold and drift you want to lead rather than pull in your nymphs uh, showing you the kind of flies I use. I use a lot of tungsten nymphs. 80% uh, of the time I'm nymphing. I'll do some streamer fishing. I'll swing wet flies. Uh, it dries. It's November now. So it's pretty well nymphing from now on. Might get a couple stone fly hatches. But yeah, most of it's going to be nymphing and subsurface. But uh, yeah, we just wanted to get out here for a couple hours tonight teach you how I do things and uh, we'll have more videos coming up of me actually fishing. Plan on going to the, up to the Little Juniata in Pennsylvania soon. Go fish the South Branch of uh, the Potomac down downstate West Virginia. Go do some more streams in Maryland, that kind of deal. But uh, if you like this, uh, like the video, there will be a lot more comment, uh, coming. Comment what you didn't like. If you'd like to fish with us or anything, let us know. I'm always down to fish with anyone teach people how I do things, show people streams, all that kind of deal. We get into a lot of fishing here. It's hunting season though, so most of our attention is hunting right now, but I'm going to be doing some fly fishing and everything. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. And uh, let's go, got to go replace a rod, so see you on the next one.